I'm Larry Fedorik, and this is Later That Same Life. On my weekly podcast, topics, discussions, stories from our lives. Season 6, Chapter 6. CTV National News with Lisa Leflam. On August 15th of this year, CTV National News anchor and chief editor Lisa Laflamme released a video to Twitter announcing that Bell Media had ended their contract with her. On June 29th, I was informed that Bell Media made a, quote, business decision to end my contract, bringing to a sudden close my long career with CTV News. I was blindsided and I'm still shocked and saddened by Bell Media's decision. Within hours, the backlash began. The video went viral. Most came out in support of the blindsided La Flamme. Corporations chimed in, and people began boycotting Bell Media and Bell products. Deja vu. A similar thing happened when Bell Media fired me from my talk show at the end of 2019. No. No, it didn't. Oh, I got a lot of support, and I remain grateful for it. But, you know, brands didn't change their advertising because of my dismissal. Still, when I heard the Lisa LaFlamme news, I could relate. Working at Bell Media for many, many years, dedicated employee, good ratings, all is well. Suddenly, unexpectedly, you are called into an office. There's your boss. Off in a corner, a scrubbed face HR person lurking in the shadows. And a vice president cuts you loose due to a business decision. My VP told me that my show was no longer profitable. I still don't know what that means. Ads on my show took in way more money than they were paying me annually. I guess I don't understand profit. I'm not a good number cruncher. And they staunchly defend the formula that says it's cheaper to fire someone, pay them not to work for a year or so, also pay the replacement, and still end up ahead on the balance sheet. A friend of mine did relate to me a different kind of formula. If you've been there longer than 20, are over 40, and make more than 60, watch your back. You are prime firing material. Lisa Laflamme, who just turned 58 this summer, qualifies in all the categories. She started at a CTV affiliate in Kitchener back in 1989 and also makes over 60K per year. Yeah, just a tad over. One celeb page pegs her annual salary at about 350K. Although I find that low, I suspect it is a little bit higher. I'm sure she's also part of a bonus plan that if she brings in the ratings, there'll be a couple of extra significant direct deposits into her account. As anchor and chief editor of the CTV Nightly News, Lisa Laflamme did bring in the ratings. This is why her sudden dismissal doesn't exactly fit into that 2040-60 formula, per se. She is a high-profile employee on a flagship broadcast that claims to be number one in the nation in their category, Nightly News. How do you just fire someone like that in a business decision? Very odd. CTV Nightly News does claim to be Canada's most watched news. I guess about a million people tune in. And that's more than those who watch the competition, CBC's The National. CBC's The National is on at 10 p.m., CTV News at 11. They're not up directly against each other. It seems to me the concept of a nightly TV newscast is a rather antiquated notion in modern times. Who still sits down at the end of the day in front of the TV to watch the news? Well, about a million Canadians, say the networks, and I'll bet it's an older demographic, because TV news in the 21st century is 24 hours. Even CTV and CBC both have separate networks that are nothing but news. I get enough news all morning and afternoon, and it's all bad. Why would I want to end my day with it? 24-hour news. 
which began with CNN in 1980, is killing us. There is an argument to be made that news should just go back to a half an hour at supper time. That would be enough. I don't disagree with that. I just don't think that's going to happen. We're not going to go retro here. When I was a young boy, the news was half a hour. That was the whole news, you know. And a guy would come on and he'd have a tie, you know, and shit. And he would say the news. And it was a half a hour long. Now, it's 24 hours long. Now, it turns out that back in the old days when it was only half an hour, they had it about right. That's about all the news there is. We have at least a half a dozen news networks that stream their content to us on multiple screens and platforms 24-7, 365. And a hundred different apps that can automatically alert you to anything that they may have missed. So why in this era is there an anchor on a nightly newscast on TV, whatever that is, and why is it such a big deal that she got fired? Part of it is the tradition of news, the nightly news. This is the way we've always done it. And you know when tradition runs up against sudden change, we tend to take notice. For years and years, Canada had two stalwarts that we looked to for credible information. CTV News with Lloyd Robertson and Peter Mansbridge on the CBC. I met Lloyd once. I was at a media event. I was a presenter at a banquet or something, I think. Waiting my turn to go on, sitting in the green room with a few others, Lloyd walks in. He makes his way over to me and says, Hello, I'm Lloyd Robertson. Yeah, I know. So I say, pleased to meet you, I'm Larry Fedorik. Lloyd says, oh, yes, Larry, I really enjoy your work. I was on cloud nine the rest of the night. Lloyd Robertson enjoys my work. But later, as I was driving home, I realized Lloyd Robertson doesn't enjoy your work. He's never heard of you. It's just something he probably says to people. Mind you, a great gentleman just to say that. Very nice. But come on, Larry, wake up, snap out of it. Lloyd Robertson enjoys your work. Now, years later, I found out that Lloyd did tune in my talk show on a regular basis, and that was very cool. Peter Mansbridge I never met. Somehow I was spared that torture because I never actually got him. Listen, I'm sure he's a fine, upstanding human who doesn't spit on the sidewalk. But for me, watching him do the news was excruciating, dull, boring. How does he not fall asleep listening to himself drone on? Hey, Peter, enough with the decaf. Grab an espresso and wash down those pep pills. I don't know. But you know, the people love them. Peter hung up the microphone in 2019. Since then, the CBC has been in some downward spiral of multiple anchors, this guy, that woman. No one seems to know who's what and when is how. They finally just settled on one main anchor, Adrian Arsenault. A brilliant choice, in my opinion. Lloyd, semi-retired in 2011, and naming his replacement would be a big deal. Lisa Laflamme began as a copywriter in 1989, soon after a reporter, a parliamentary specialist, then foreign correspondent, main network news division since 03, and then 2011, the big chair. CTV National News with Lisa Leflam. As of this summer, her CV would read CTV Nightly News Anchor and Chief Editor 2011 to 2022. Incidentally, chief editor or senior correspondent or producer is usually a title that the main anchor also gets. They are often more than just a talking head. They work on the stories. They make news and content decisions and then present the news to us. It is difficult to think of a more clumsily handled personnel change than this one. Bell Media parting ways with Lisa Laflamme. 
the old media magic trick. One minute you're there, the next minute you've disappeared. Gone are the days that after 35 years of dedicated service, you get a banquet in your honor and a gold watch. Or at the very least, a going away party with a Dairy Queen cake. These days you are turfed. And then you just hope that people take your side when you begin to whine on social media. Lisa Laflamme did what she has been doing nightly since 2011. She delivered the big news story of the day. Today, with a range of emotions, I'm sharing with you some information about me and my career with CTV News. For 35 years, I have had the privilege of being welcomed into your homes to deliver the news on a nightly basis, so I felt you should hear this directly from me. News anchor fired. She did so on Twitter and told us that she had been asked to keep the news of her dismissal a secret from viewers and co-workers until the details of her exit package were finalized. As we say in the business, that's a real dick move by management. Apparently, Lisa kept the news private for over a month until Bell Media lawyers and executives managed to get their stuff in order. You'd think they'd have all that stuff together beforehand and avoid that four to six weeks of rumor and gossip that must have just run through Bell Media headquarters. Where's Lisa LaFlan? I don't remember her talking about any vacation. Why is she not returning my calls? What's going on in our newsroom? The media rule is this. You must control the narrative. Politicians, celebrities, agents, managers, public relations companies, they all spend gazillions annually to control the narrative. Media is supposed to be the master of this since they do control many of the platforms and the messengers. But no, somehow Bell Media must have missed that webinar. They lost control of this from the very beginning. This speaks to the grand incompetence of Bell as a media company. Immediately after the release of La Flamme's personal video, there was a frenzy of information and misinformation. Why did this happen? Ageism? Sexism? Toxic work environment? Business decision? You know, business ahead of people. Or was it? The, the gray, gray hair. hair. One story also said that Lisa La Flamme was offered a final exit newscast in which she would be allowed to sign off thank her viewers and co-workers, and say goodbye. It is said that it was Lisa who turned it down. Personally, I believe that to be true. Haven't been able to verify that, though. I mean, that sounds like Bell Media thought that would be a nice thing to do. But if you're Lisa LaFlam, you go, well, you're firing me suddenly for no good reason. But then you want me to go on the air and be all sweet and thankful. No thanks. Let's look at all those other aspects. First of all, the head of CTV News is an executive named Michael Melling, who only came on board in that position a few years ago. He had the corporate behind his back nickname of the Axe Man. Although, I don't know how behind his back it actually was. When you get a new boss, and he's known as the Axe Man, one can only imagine what kind of work environment you're suddenly in. Our boss is a guy whose expertise appears to be firing people. Staff were working all day with that guillotine over their head. But even at that, who would think that it would be Lisa LaFlamme? Lisa worked hand in hand with a producer named Rosa Huang. Some said that Lisa and Rosa were known around the newsroom as the Mean Girls. But I don't know, whoever was trying to sell that toxic work environment story wasn't getting very far with it. We all know how that works, you know, you hear a story about some bad behavior, and then usually you hear another one, and then two more, and then ten more, and then it's pretty much confirmed. Yeah, that person's an asshole. This just wasn't happening with Lisa and Rosa. Now, I can't imagine a newsroom on a network flagship nightly newscast is always a happy, fun place to work where everybody gets along all the time and agrees on everything. 
It's got to be tense. We're working on a deadline. There's not always time for pleases and thank yous. We've got to get it done. But by my count, for every story that came up about mean girls, there also seemed to be three or four more saying, nope, it's just dedicated people who care about the stories. They're actually supportive of new ideas and so on. Lisa Laflamme was fired because she created a toxic workplace. Wow, just not enough evidence to back that up. Selling Lisa as the bad guy and Michael Melling as the savior of the work environment just wasn't working. Again, I don't believe it to be true. Well, what else? The business decision. Well, I think we can all agree that that had to be a big part of it. Bell Media usually cleans house near the end of a fiscal quarter, so then the quarterly report looks better for the board of directors. It is a business, fair enough. There's an old saying that says, you know, money's not the game, it's simply how we keep score. I fear, though, that for many businesses, including Bell Media, it has become the game. Product and people be damned. Was it sexism? Well, granted that women have a tougher go of it in most industries, including media, and especially if you choose to be in front of the camera. But in this case, I do find it difficult to believe that you choose a competent, credible news person to be the first full-time female anchor of a major Canadian newscast let her do this for over a decade, and then fire her because she's a woman? It can't be just that. Let's get back to Smelling, or Melling, or whatever his name is. Reports were that he and La Flamme did clash on a few issues, on a few news stories. On first blush, that just sounds to me like life in a newsroom. The one angle that has persisted is that Melling did not like that Lisa had suddenly decided to go gray, i.e. stop dyeing her hair. It happened right in the middle of the COVID pandemic. I remember when I first saw her silver. Loved it. I posted about it. I got the usual pushback about a woman on TV being held to a different standard. You know, it's all about her looks and her hair. Well, there is that, but I also posted the day Lloyd Robertson decided to stop being orange. He went to his natural silver white. It was a good move. Stop pretending, all of you. We know you're not 29 years old. During COVID, a lot of people, celebrities, male, female, other, stopped coloring. The silver mane was very in vogue for women, even the younger ones who weren't naturally beginning to turn gray. It was the perfect time for Lisa Laflamme to do it, in my opinion. I thought it gave her more credibility. And let's be honest, Lisa Laflamme's hair is a thing. She has a big shock of it. Lisa had a full-time producer, but I'll bet her hair had its own staff of three. Well, if it is about the gray hair on Lisa Laflamme, well, I guess you could play the ageism or sexism card too. It probably came down to ego. And who is running the newsroom? Is it Lisa or Michael? And I have a pretty good guess that Michael Melling was trying to wrestle control for himself because I've known too many media managers, egomaniacs who don't have the talent to be the stars, so instead they boss and bully. It's classic. Now, he couldn't have made this decision in a vacuum. This is not some part-time staffer. It's your main news anchor. So I guess he went upstairs, right to the top, made the case, and then pulled the trigger, as they say. Since then, Bell Media has issued several statements saying that they regret the way this was handled. Yeah, I guess it's easier to say sorry than to try and get it right the first time. And after the public outcry, it was announced that Michael Melling was going on leave pending the results of an independent investigation. As usual in media, I'm not sure how independent these investigations are, but hopefully Melling gets his due. You know, humiliated, ousted, 
put in the stocks in the public square where we can pelt him with rotten fruit. Or, more likely, vindicated, promoted, and rewarded. We have this other saying in media, most media management are just failed on-air talent. They are drawn to media for some reason. They have no skills in it, so they're promoted up to management. I don't know that about Melling, just highly suspect it. Could it really just be about the gray hair? Since this firing, most notably, Dove and Wendy's have come out in support of Lisa LaFlamme. Dove said the Dove was going gray. Wendy's temporarily changed that red-headed Wendy logo to a gray-haired version. Oh, sure, brands will attempt to jump on any trend in order to sell more soap or hamburgers. But still, in a world where the battle for the consumer dollar can be won or lost on social, smart moves, I thought, on their part. And this is another area where Bell Media still couldn't get it. Instead of shutting up and letting it go away, they issued a statement warning the corporations. You know that jumping on a trend can easily backfire, they said. There were also reports that a news story about Dove done for CTV Nightly News was edited and compromised by news executives before it went to air, causing journalists, including those at CTV News, to question the news integrity. Wow. And in a goofy bit of irony, the guy who made these new decisions, the Melling replacement, was named Gray. Dick Gray goes by Richard. Yeah, I will give you this, Bell Media. You are big time in everything you do, including your screw-ups. The big guy, the big CEO of Bell, is Mirko Bibic. Eventually, he had to issue a statement telling us that Michael Melling was on leave. He praised La Flamme and went on to say that, quote, broadcasting in Canada is undergoing a massive change, unquote. Gee, Mirko, I guess that's why you're the boss. I think I read that too in No Shit magazine. Bibbick and Bell wouldn't know broadcasting if it came up to them and shouted into their face, which is what it does, by the way. With all of this talk about the changing landscape of communication and media, and where is it all going? You'd think that media companies would have some sort of handle on it. Let me let you in on this secret. They don't. They appear as confused as the rest of us. Maybe even more so. Let's argue for a second that expensive nightly newscasts are a thing of the past. And that firing Lisa Laflamme was the right move. Still, this is how it's done? This is how you treat people? Bell Media Actions showed a complete disregard for their customers, their viewers, and their staff. And this resulted in a huge injustice to many, especially Lisa Laflamme, whose 35-year journalistic career has been reduced to an argument about gray hair. And honey, don't let the door hit you on the way out. And what about the other story? Lisa's announced replacement, Omar Sachadina, a Ugandan-born Canadian immigrant of Indian descent who used his talent and work ethic to take advantage of opportunities in this country, to rise through the ranks and get the top job in his chosen field. This otherwise would be a great story. He'd be the first person of color to hold a national news anchor title in Canada. Yeah, I know Ian Hanneman Singh, but he was never full-time. Omar's accomplishments have been completely diminished now by clumsy, incompetent, and possibly arrogant Bell Media management. His first day on the job should be joyous and celebratory. Instead, it will likely be under a cloud working in a divided newsroom, a fearful place. The old anchor and the new anchor both have been done a terrible disservice. Lisa Laflamme, well, she won't be taking transit to the food bank anytime soon, but still, what a terrible way to go. 
Maybe she doesn't go. She ends up at Global, CBC, or CNN. Maybe she starts a very successful YouTube channel. Who knows? Michael Melling? Who cares? Mirko Bibic. You know, 2020, the year after I got fired, was a tough year for me, and it was a tough year for everyone. It was the big COVID year. It was a hard go everywhere. Bibic took home almost $9.5 million that year, about the same every year since, happily paid by Bell Media. You know, a business decision. Later That Same Life is written, produced, and voiced by Larry Fedorik. Larry Fedorik, 37 at gmail.com. Subscribe to Larry's podcast YouTube channel. Get automatic notifications with each new episode. And, and I want you to know what these last 35 years have meant to me. Everything.